liberate them. Point number four of this outline, I see Christ as the revealer. Let's go back to our text. What is he revealing? He tells you in Luke 4 and 18. Look what he said. And recovery of sight to the blind. See, Christ came to reveal things to people. People are blinded. That's why we can't even say, man, they're voting for Obama like Sean said because he's black. Mm -hmm. They believe in everything because he's black. Do you see his heart? Can't even see it. Can't even see it. No man outside of Christ has perfect insight or spiritual vision. Or it says in Romans 3.23, all is sin and come short of the glory of God. We're a part of that. So, not saying that all of us can see clearly all the time. But in Christ, you can see things with a far better focus. Uh, before you commit the sin as a Christian, you can see what the result would be, and that's what stops you from doing it. Because you know what it will result in. Now, let's look at this very, very close. You have to ask yourself, well, what does he reveal to me? What does he open my eyes to? I, I used to be blind. I've recovered from spiritual blindness, and now I see. Now, am I going to become that agent that's going to help other people see clearly? See, because that's why Christ, that's what the portrait of Christ is all about. Christ said, God has sent me to open the eyes of those that are blind. What has he sent you to do? To keep their eyes blindfolded or to open them wide? And I'm telling you, the church has gone, man, I just wish on a field problem on Sunday, we can go to a mega church, and especially West Angeles down the street, see the way those folk are dressed, those girls are dressed when they go to church down there. It looks like a fashion show. They down there, man, and they, ooh. Well, <laughs> leave it alone, John. Stick with it. All right, I'm trying to. The revealer. I'm redeemable. All men are redeemable. God loves me enough, therefore he provides for that lack in my life. And so God has given to me power to see, power to flee, and then power to be set free. It says in John 8.32, if the Son has set you free, you're free indeed. This is what the panoramic view of that portrait in Christ is. He wants us to be, um, I don't like this term agents, but tools to cause people to become free. That's what he wants us to do. Point number five and lastly, and it's very quick but important outline. I see the jubilee of Christ's church. Look what he says in verse 18e. He says, to set free those who are downtrodden. Okay, recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are downtrodden. This is a wonderful part of scripture. You really want to read about jubilee. Uh, let me take you there. Leviticus 25. Let's go there very quickly. And so that you can understand. Yeah, that's 2510. Thank you. 2510. Leviticus 2510. You shall thus consecrate the 50th year and proclaim a release through the land to all its inhabitants. Now this was for the Jewish community. Jubilee does not work in Christianity, but we're looking at a portrait. My freedom in Christ should give us the spirit of Jubilee. Oh, I, oh, I wish you guys could see this. Alphonse, what Christ has given you is so beautiful. It should make you feel like celebrating every day because you say, with no money, no job, no car, Jubilee. Look at this. Watch this. It shall be a jubilee to you, and each of you shall return to his own property, and each of you shall return to his family. You try to get folk to go home to their family. And then he says, you shall have the 50th year as a jubilee. In other words, for 49 years you would have worked, but this 50th year was a jubilee year. Nobody worked. And for a whole year, you just partied and lived off of what you did and enjoyed the blessing that God gave you. Wow. This is beautiful.
Beautiful. This is how God kept his people together. Because when they'd all come together, man, this is beautiful. And then he says, you shall not sow, nor reap its aftergrowth, nor gather it from its untrimmed vines. For it is a jubilee. It shall be holy to you. You shall eat its crops out of the field. On this year of jubilee, each of you shall return to his own property. That means even if you, you know, got to put off of it. And the realtor took it back. Well, when the 50th year came, it was yours again. Mm -hmm. Go on and take that land that you had. You could be in debt for 40 years waiting on Jubilee to come. And in this thing, in this constitution under God, you would go back and get it. Now look at this. You've experienced it. You've experienced it. God ain't holding nothing against me right now. He said, John, I've given you jubilee. But I'm, I don't have a big church house. And, uh, I don't have a Benz. He says, you got that Lexus, that old Lexus. You cover it up, keep it uncovered. Jubilee. Over there, finds you and your wife are living in an apartment. Jubilee. I haven't been able to buy me a new suit or a new wardrobe. Jubilee. When you wear the old contentment in Christ. That's a beautiful thing. All redeemed persons view themselves as freed slaves. The shackles have been removed. This is why we want to present Christ to other people. They're enslaved to it. You, you know anybody that's on narcotics and can't get off? I mean, you know, it's like, you know, when you think of, I hate to use him as an example, but he's a perfect example. 